It's not that Mort was new to Pelican Bay, but it's not that he was old to Pelican Bay either. He'd been here long enough that the charm had worn off. In fact, it had been two weeks since he'd called his asshole of a brother to tell him how shitty this place was, and how he was a schmuck for telling Mort to move out here after Michelle died. He'd come over to Mort's nest talking about how amazing Pelican Bay was and how it was everything Mort needed to get his mind off of everything. A fresh start. Only fresh thing Mort had gotten since he'd moved out here was a little bit of poon from a crawdad at Bubba Gump Shrimp Company on the boardwalk before they boiled her ass and served her up to some fat fuck in a smiley face t-shirt. Today wouldn't be any different. Mort would wake up, go down to the pier, scope out some food, and then drink himself to sleep down at the sandbar. Mort's alarm rings at 12 noon. He rolls out of his nest, stretches his wings and neck flap, and starts off for the pier. He glides past a few bleary-eyed tourists who yawn outside the coffee fox. He comes to a landing right on the edge of the pier next to Mickey, another pelican that frequents the boardwalk. To call him a friend of Mort's would be a stretch, but they were a bit more than acquaintances. They're the kind of friend your dad makes when he's 55 and lonely. They never bond on a personal level, but they go to minor league baseball games together all the time. Hey, uh, how's it hanging, Mort? Mickey grunts. I'm tired of shit, Mick. Tired of shit. How about you? How's Maggie? Ah, she's good for nothing. Those eggs really ruined her, Mickey responds. Mort doesn't really care. In fact, he hadn't really been listening in the first place. To Mort, conversation with Mickey is just a formality, something that he has to do to get to the part where they just sit in silence and hunt for fish. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, I'm glad Michelle and I never had kids, Mort confesses. Nah, we didn't either, Mickey responds with a dejected glance down to the ocean. Ah, must have been born stupid or something. Broke their necks when they first took flight, Mort thinks to himself. An awkward silence begins to hang over them when, What happened to him? Mort asks, not really wanting to know the answer, but sensing that Mickey wants to tell him. Big ass wild dog ate him out of the nest. Maggie ain't been the same ever since. Mickey wipes a tear from his beak with his wing. The eggs also destroyed her shithole, so now sex is just like putting your dick in a fucking loose wet bag that doesn't smell good, Mickey responds. Mort, fucking disgusted, decides now was the time to dive in and get some food. Sorry to hear that, man. Uh, I I'm gonna head out and see what I can find. He takes a dive for the water and brings himself up to hover a couple inches above the waves so he can find some fish. So Mickey's wife's got a loose ass, huh? Mort thinks to himself as he scans the water. He spots a small fish a couple yards away, gives himself a quick dip, and scoops the fish into his pouch and down his throat. Bluegill. Good thing all bird shit is just already diarrhea. Otherwise, Mort would be squirting out some after eating this bottom feeder. Ugh. A couple hundred yards off the pier is Pelican Bay Island, a small little island with a radio tower on it. It's the best place to get some bass and tilapia, and Mort was in the mood for something that wouldn't make his shit even runnier, so he flew the extra couple yards and shored himself up on Pelican Bay Island. The place was a little run down and uninhabited, but who gives a fuck if the fish are tasty? The whole island is maybe a mile across and has a bunch of overgrowth. Mort hasn't spent much time exploring the island. Not really his thing. Michelle now, if she was here, Mort chuckles, thinking to himself. Michelle had always been adventurous. When she was alive, Mort had flown with her down to Buenos Aires to appear in the animated film Rio. Mort never understood how Michelle constantly fell into these opportunities, but they just had a way of sniffing her out. God, Mort thinks. It should have been me that died instead of her. With a dejected glance down to the ocean, Mort scans the water for fish when he suddenly feels the unmistakable grip of a human hand around his throat. Bob races back to his makeshift shelter with the bird dangling from a rope at his side. He wasn't sure how tasty pelican meat would be, but when you're stranded for... How many days was it now? Six? Seven? Bob couldn't be sure. He entered the mouth of the cave and put the bird in an upside-down milk crate, which he then sat on as he tends to the fire. Mort comes to and is instantly scared. Where the fuck am I? He screams as soon as he opens his eyes. He tries to stand up but finds himself restrained in a small box. Barely able to move even his head, Mort screams at the top of his lungs, louder than Mort even knew he could get. 
Light begins to spill into the box as the man stands up and grabs Mort out from the crate. He brings Mort face to face with him and shakes him furiously. Quiet, you! He yells. Mort claws at the man with the talons on his feet and draws blood. Youch! The man screams, dropping Mort. Mort scrambles across the wet cave floor, struggling to gain his footing. He stretches and flaps his wings in an attempt to get off the ground, but the man grabs him before he can. Gotcha! He yells. Mort flails his wings and limbs, thrashes his neck, expands and contracts his gully-gully neck, whatever the fuck he can do to hurt, distract, or scare this man. Get the fuck off me! Mort yells as he slams his beak into the man's eyeball. The man hollers in pain and, yet again, releases Mort, who wastes no time in flying to the mouth of the cave before the man can even process his pain. Mort makes a hard left and flies as hard as he can to the shore as the man clambers behind him, hurtling over fallen trees and crashing through branches. Just as Mort reaches the shore and clears the tree canopy, he shoots as fast as he can vertically. Flapping, flapping, flapping as hard as he can, Mort flies straight up and up, further and further, until he looks down and can only see clouds. Mort takes a deep breath, exhales, and starts gliding back down toward land. Jesus, Michelle, that was a close one, he thinks to himself. Mort is careful as he descends below the clouds, keeping a watchful eye, just in case the man stranded on Pelican Bay Island has some sort of weapon with shooting capabilities. On his way back to the pier, Mort scans the small island and finds the man sobbing outside of the cave. Mort hovers overhead, hoping not to be seen. <laughs> Pathetic piece of shit is going to starve out here, Mort thinks to himself, proud that he had outwitted the human and sorry that he had ever said he should have been the one to die instead of Michelle. Everything happens for a reason, and he'll go when it's his time to go, and not a second suddenly, a little girl emerges from the cave. She's maybe four years old at most and is desperately emaciated. The life is sucked out of Mort at the sight of the little girl, and he lands on a nearby tree branch. Casey Lynn! The man runs to the little girl and holds her in his arms. Tommy Hoot! The little girl grabs her distended stomach and grimaces. The man's tears begin to flow anew, but he tries to hide them from his little daughter. I'm trying to get us some food, sweetheart, he says. What, mama? The little girl nuzzles into her father's chest. Me too, baby. <laughs> Me too. The man says after choking back a few more sobs. Mort waits a few moments before pulling off from the branch and heading back toward the pier. How was that guy going to feed his kid? Thank God he and Michelle never had kids because Mort didn't need another mouth to feed. I mean, Jesus, he could barely feed himself something other than beer most days. Slowly descending into his nest for the evening, Mort couldn't shake what the little girl had said. What, Mama? How did they get there in the first place? Mort had never seen anyone on Pelican Bay Island, so there must have been some sort of accident. Mort glances at the photo of Michelle pinned to the wall of his nest. Mish, what am I supposed to do? He asks. Casey Lynn giggles hysterically and screams in delight. Bob's consciousness slowly flickers on, and for a second he forgets they are stranded on a deserted island just a few hundred yards from land. For a moment, he imagines the smell of bacon cooking in the kitchen. Terry is downstairs cooking, and Casey Lynn is watching reruns of Ni Hao Kai Lan on the TV in the dining room. It isn't until he opens his eyes and feels the empty spot on the blanket beside him that he is filled with absolute horror. Casey Lynn? He bolts upright and sprints to the mouth of the cave. Just as he gets into a full run, he screeches to a halt. Casey Lynn, just a few feet outside of the cave with a giant bucket of fish. C Casey? What? What? Hello? The man screams out, assuming there must be a fisherman who has discovered them. Casey Lynn screams with delight as Mort steps out from behind the tree sheepishly and nudges the bucket to the dad with his beak. The man lets out a surprised, huh, and then squats down in amazement. You're the, the pelican from yesterday, he says. Much to his absolute shock, Mort nods. He grabs the bucket of fish and starts running back to the cave. 
He turns back at the last second. Thank you, he says, and then continues into the cave to prepare the fish. Mort smiles and looks to the horizon, sure that Michelle is proud of him. He turns to the sea and begins to flap his wings when the little girl cries out, Bertie, no! Casey Lynn runs up to Mort and then past him out onto the beach. She begins flapping her arms up and down like wings and running back and forth making bird noises. Mort watches in delight and then joins in. By the third or fourth day, Mort senses it's time to get these people some real help. So, with Bob's help, Mort strategically cuts down a palm tree to fall right on the Pelican Bay Island radio tower. Within a few hours, a rescue boat arrived and brought Bob and Casey Lynn to shore. It turns out that the family had been kayaking on the bay when their boat capsized. Bob, a bit of an older gentleman, couldn't carry both Casey Lynn and her mother. And after spending so much time with Bob and Casey Lynn, Mort decides to go with them. He doesn't know where they're from or if they live anywhere near a water source for him to eat fresh fish on the daily, but he does know it would be an adventure. He'd get to hang out with Bob, watch Casey Lynn grow up, maybe. And if it didn't work out, well, he would just flap on down to the next opportunity. That's what Michelle would have done and what she would have wanted for Mort. Mort tucks the photo of Michelle under his wing and looks over at Mickey. Oh boy, I, I'm just really going to miss you, Mort. It, it ain't going to be the same here without you, Mickey says. You, you could come, Mick, Mort says. <sighs> what about Maggie? She loves it here, Mickey responds. The two stare at each other silently for a few seconds before Mort finally hugs Mickey. Take care of yourself, buddy, he says. Mort starts to the end of the branch, takes a look back at Mickey, salutes, then dives off the branch into his new life. End. Drink your prune juice, you old bat. <laughs>